following her for so so many years. She is really like her her um Shira Manamuna, her newsletter, everything. She really has given me so much credit. So I feel like it's it's like beyond an honor to have you um welcome us in Harish and be Thank here to talk to our ladies give us some physic in this time and I just want to say, I don't know, just a big thank you. I'm so thank honored, you. so honored to be here, and we cannot wait to for you to share your Torah and thank get inspired you. in this time, and hopefully, and hopefully, um, get some strength for not just this time, but like for everything that's going on in the world. Um, no oh, yeah, no. I have 45 minutes to try to change my life, and everybody else is here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and at the end, please God, there'll be time for questions, and also uh, she'll be here. Obviously, she's here. She's telling her blood and. Maybe get a signature? Yes, 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 I'm here, yes. I'm so here. Enjoy, I'm just going to run down your office. Thank you, thank you. I'll start off with a bracha. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech, HaOlam, Shehakol, Nihia, Bikvaro. Amen. So thank you to the Rebbiton. Thank you to, um, I'm sorry, Barbara for hosting um, tonight's class. And I, I feel very honored. I. Um, it's so interesting because before I left, my my kids are like, "Oh, so how many people are going to be there?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Maybe it's just me and uh, the hostess and the rabbits and I." Like, so it's really nice to see a beautiful um, crowd here, and um, I'm very, very um, humbly honored to be here. Um, and you made the two hour plus uh, trip worthwhile coming from Bet Shemesh. So um, I'm really wow, very, very yes. happy. Well, what, you all thought I came from like around the corner. <laughs> no, we did it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, listen, I, I'm interested. Um, my, my, my website, the website, it's, or, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. I don't know, maybe this is uh, the first time some of us have met. Um, so first of all, thank you really for, for um, uh, believing in this evening and uh, making this happen. And uh, like I said, it's an honor, especially on Erev uh, Yom Kippur, to be here together on the Erev of October 7th and all that's going on in the world. I just needed to let that, that exhale out. There's just so much going on in our minds, in our hearts, in the world. Um, it used to be that we thought that we were in our own trauma and that nobody else knew what trauma was and that we all went through our own fears and emotional distress and anguish and nobody else could feel, nobody else could know, nobody else could understand. And today, unfortunately, fortunately, in Hashem's infinite wisdom, we're all sitting here united. Um, if, if for no other, if, if there was nothing else to have brought us together, it, it, it is this, this experience of October 7th that we have literally are living through a Holocaust in our own generation. And uh, we wish it would have been differently. Um, I, The way I, I'd like to assume is that we were all probably very much asleep and we really, really all needed a wake up call to realize and recognize, to take a look around us and to see that we are really one nation together um, and that we are standing on more common ground than uncommon ground. And I, I think that we can all safely say that. I, can, I think that I can also safely say that any barriers that have separated us from one another, we don't really care about as much anymore. We really don't care how you cover your hair or do you cover your hair. We don't care what pants you wear, what store you like to shop in. I don't care what shul you daven in. I don't care what nosach you daven in. I don't care what rebbe you follow or you don't follow. I just want to see a name and if there's a name that I need to daven for, then I don't, I'm not asking any questions. It doesn't bother me. I don't care what they were doing at the Novus Festival. I don't care anything. I don't care where their parents live. I, I don't care. We're together. We're together. We're, we need each other. We need, we've needed each other more now than I think we've ever felt before. And, um, and it's so important for us to recognize that in less than 48 hours, we're all going to be together. If we could just close the, the, the um, messages on the phones, that would be amazing. Um, that we're all, t in, within 48 hours, we're all going to be standing in front of Hashem and there really is going to be nothing that's going to differentiate one from another. 
on Yom Kippur, we all do the same thing. We all stop eating, more or less. We all stop interacting on the externals. We're all standing in front of Hashem as souls, really in complete honesty and in, co in complete um, uh, you know, openness. We all run away from vulnerability. Nobody really likes to be vulnerable, but we're all going to be extremely vulnerable in 48 hours from now, standing in front of our Creator as He checks us all out and questions where we're holding, what we've done, the resources that He's given to us, how well we've been taking that into accountability in our lives. And um, I don't want to look at it as, as a place of judgment because it's really just a place of, of, of accountability, of reflection, of silence. There's a lot of silence that goes on in Yom Kippur. And there's a lot of silence that's going on now within ourselves. We, we, we don't know. We just, I find myself constantly just going like, and just nodding my head and closing my eyes. Like that is like become a very normal response of mine. You, 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 another soldier, another bad piece of news, another terror attack, you just are just, there's like no more words. And it's just like a, like, and just like, I find myself doing this all the time, just trying to almost, you know, embody this experience once again. The good news is that we're at the eve of Geula, literally mamish at the, I know we've been hearing this for about a decade now. We've been hearing this for about a decade. But we really, really are living in the eve of Geula. We really are at the brink of this is it. I heard a shir on Motzei Shabbat um, by Rav Biton. He he um, teaches every Motzei Shabbat on Arutz uh, Alpaim, um, the 2000 channel, whatever they call it. He said something which I've been feeling, but I, I, I didn't hear anybody say this, but he said it. He said it. He said, anybody thinking for any moment, in, like at all, just even contemplating that this all is not leading to the ultimate redemption, that we're going to somehow just, okay, we'll get the peace. North will be quiet. South will be quiet. Everyone will be going to go back home. And we're just going to go back to like some sort of normalcy, like with COVID. We thought we were going back to COVID. We never really went back to normalcy, even with COVID. We never. We, it, something remarkable changed in the whole world. This is all going to ultimately lead us to that ultimate revelation. And that's what really the difference between Galut and Geula really is. Notice that in, I know we all know this teaching that Geula is, you know, is, is with the Aleph. And we're missing the Aleph. Yes, we are missing Aluf, Moshe Olam, but we also need to know that the, that the commonality between Geula and Galut is Gal, Gimel, Lamed. Gal, first of all, it's a bunch of waves, right? There's a bunch of waves, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's this constant upheavalness. But really, most important, what really is, is the ultimate deciding factor between the two is this idea of gilui, right? And that's why it says, Chazal teach us, there's going to be such a, we're going to be in such a state of happiness the state of happiness that's going, that we're going to find ourselves in ultimately when the time comes of Geula, please God very soon, Barachamim. Geula is coming. I always say, just we have to ask for Rachamim. That's all. That's really where we're at. Geula is coming. We're on the Geula train. We all clicked our Ravkav. We're all on the Geula train. We just ask for it to be Barachamim Geluim, for revealed Rachamim for it to happen. That's all we're asking. But the idea is there's going to be a level of happiness that we have never, ever, ever experienced before in our lives. And there's one word, you know, happiness is happiness in English. But in Hebrew, you have different levels. You have chedva, simcha, like we have different levels, right? There's one level of happiness we have never, ever, ever experienced before. And that's called gila. Gila. Gila is a sense of happiness that only comes from the idea of geula and legalot. There's a level of happiness that we're all going to experience, God willing, when geula comes, and we're at the footsteps, mamish, the eve of it, that comes from the idea of our eyes being opened, the revelation to surface, this revelation of, wow, this is what was going on all along, that aha moment. 
of suddenly realize it's like when you're looking for something and then it was here all along like what a happiness comes from that <clears throat> ultimate revelation god willing that is the happiness um that god willing will will occur and will will envelop each and every one of us the call of mamash amen so with all that again i'll just say thank you um for um enabling me to come here tonight and to, to share some deeper chizuk I always say, you know, I find myself really very comfortable on any one of those couches here in front of me because whenever I teach, I don't teach from a place of, which is why I like to sit in eye contact with everybody because I really feel that every time I teach, I teach myself. I'm really, really here to teach myself because you really can never get enough of all that is going to be opening up for us today, tonight, in this class, um, in this gathering because... Um, no matter how much I try to brainwash myself and how much uh, women around the world call me the Amuna teacher, I'm like, no, 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 no. I am Amuna 101 student, just like everybody else. And in fact, as my rabbi said to me, uh, you know, when I come and I quetch to him and I say to him, like, really, like, why is this happening to me? And he's like, what did you think when you decided to be appointed to teach the daily dose of Amuna and or Amuna or did you think Hashem was going to skip over you and say no I'm not going to test this one she's the teacher like we'll leave her alone he says you're at the front line you're in the fire of Geula of Amuna you're going to be tested big time more than anybody like okay right from my flesh I will get to know you Hashem um, so I really am teaching myself and don't think that anything that I'm teaching here is textbook like material in the sense that we're all here because we need to be here together. None of us can get through this tkufa and this period of time alone. This is a time to gather. It's a time to be united. It's a time to speak. It's a time to share. It's a time to really exchange. Like when I'm having a down day, you'll have a you know, uplift a day and you'll help me and and so, enhance the, the opposite. So it's really important to, you should know, don't keep your feelings to yourself. Don't go through whatever it is you're going through by yourself, whether it's personal or whether it's just collectively, just not being able to bear the grunt of the pain of the collective trauma of everything that we're all going through. At the end of the day, we are one neshama. We really are. We're spiritual limbs of the Shekhinah. Everyone's feeling it. So why are we hiding from one another? Why are we not sharing? Why are we not offering a shoulder to cry on one another? I don't know. I still today I don't get that. Like I because we don't know that we're scared we don't know the right answer. We don't. There is no answer. We're not. We shouldn't be in the pursuit of answers. We are, we have no answers. It's just that let me be the container to hold your pain right now because I have the strength to do it. Tomorrow I won't have it, and you'll have it, and you'll give it back to me. We. This is th this whole everything mishkabal chulen pot that we're going through right now with so much emotions and so much stuff that we're going through is really only so that we could hold one another and be united with one another do we not are we not getting that message like that's what this is about so if I'm isolating from anybody if I'm keeping to myself because I don't want to burden someone else or I don't know what someone else is going to be able to offer me or what am I going to say or maybe I'm not going to have the right words to say I'm so scared I'm going to say something that's not right that's doing the exact opposite of what this whole thing is meant to do and that's to unite us so these evenings are so important, not because I'm here, like every, everyone's a Rebbitzin now. Can I just explain that? Everybody has a Rebbitzin Eitza or something to offer to a friend. Everybody does. Everybody has something that they can offer. And Masha Yotze Mialev Nichnas Lalev. When your heart is open and you're really in that vulnerable, warm, loving, soft place of feeling the pain of the cloud and yourself and wanting to share only goodness trust me you open up your mouth and you're like where did that quote just come from i don't remember learning that one <laughs> and and it just comes out it you just you suddenly realize that you are a toa mitalechet you're an open scroll of Torah. You have learned all your life. Maybe for that moment while you're picking tomatoes in the supermarket, 
all that learning was for that one moment where you're meeting someone who's gonna say to you, you know, you, you see it, you just feel it, she's just not doing well, she's not handling things well. Be there for her, rub, you know, we're not in COVID, right? So you could rub her shoulder and say, you know, we're all going through this. Do you know how, how good that feels? It, it's like, you know, you we all feel like we're the only ones going through this, like feeling a hardship and, and feeling isolated. We shouldn't, we shouldn't, nobody should be feeling alone. Nobody should be feeling alone. Um, right now, where we're holding, we need to be literally anticipating Geula, yearning for Geula. There's nothing that has kept Am Yisrael alive and and able to sustain the oppressions and the um, Holocaust and the pogroms and the, the evil that we face as a nation, the anti-Semitism, the isolation, N nothing has ever kept us going other than the anticipation for Geula. If we right now aren't sitting every single moment while we hear the siren just for just a split second before we run to the room or while we're running to the room, say, is is there like a, a, a shofar in the midst of the siren? We should be anticipating, our eyes should be looking. When you hear an, a loud boom, not from a siren, just from construction, from whatever, from the garbage being cleaned. From the cars. From the, the, the cars, yeah, whatever. Cause. Yeah, what, whatever it is, we should be saying, was that was that a shofar? C could it have been a shofar? Like that is the level of yearning, of anticipation for Geula that we should be living with that heightened awareness. Our senses should be so heightened that at any moment, at any moment, we should be hoping and yearning for that moment to arrive. And, and it should be that hope, that hope should be what is giving us the strength to get through every single moment. At the end of the day, those who have left the world, those who have left the world, they see the truth. They're that much closer to, to you know, the, that, that truthful state. We down here, we need to keep ourselves going by that anticipation of, of believing and um, and feeling the Geula coming close to us. And now we have Yom Kippur. We have Yom Kippur literally within 48 hours. Yom Kippur, so what is the word Kippur? Kapara, right? We're, we all look at and we all think about the idea of, of Yom Kippur is a day of one big Kapara. Well, Chazal actually teaches, Hasidu teaches us that the word kipper can actually be looked at from the idea of it being like a parochet, right? A cover. Yom Kippur can actually be looked at as a day of a cover, of, a, of an encasement. What does the parochet do? The parochet covers up something very sacred, the, the Aon Kodesh, right? So we should be looking at the day Yom Kippur as it being the day of covering, the day of protection, the day of feeling that Hashem is enveloping us with his love. Like I said, it's a day where we make a choice. Every single one of us makes a choice. Yes, of course, it's Allah. We shouldn't eat. We shouldn't this. We shouldn't wear that. We should abstain from certain physical pleasures. But really, at the end of the day, we all make that decision that we're going into Yom Kippur because we know that on this day, there's something that we're supposed to be coming out with. This is something that we're going in with and there's something that we're hoping to be coming out with. And what we really should be looking for on this day, on this day of, of Yom Kippur, is that we should be looking to be covered and enveloped in Hashem's love. Rosh Hashanah, we, we, we make a decision. We go into to Rosh Hashanah and we say we want a Rosh Shoneh. Rosh Hashanah is, we want a different head. We want a different beginning. We want a different something. We're looking, right? Shana is from the word Shoni, right? We want something different. So we want something, I, I, when I went into Rosh Hashanah, I said, I am so ready for that restart button. Like I am so ready for that real new beginning. I'm so ready to mark, you know, Tough shin pay, Dalit, and for it to be down in history, like I don't I don't want to remember it. 
and and tough shin pei hei is chua po that really what it is it's a new chua it's 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 a it's a yeshua that's coming it's po it's right here that's what the pei hei god willing is going to be for us so the idea is we need to be going into yom kippur with a feeling of, I want to feel this envelopment, Hashem, of your presence. And they and we know, Chazal teach us, that etzem hayom, you could be, if, you know, if you're a lousy faster, and you're all day in bed, and you can't make it to shul, etzem hayom, the idea that it, in it of itself, the day of itself, Hashem, is down, 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 down with us. We only bring him back up to Shemaim, so to speak, with every Hashem Hu Elokim at Sha'at Neila, when he closes the door. But really, Hashem is down, 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 so to speak, with us the entire Yom Tzitz, like his last day, so to speak, from all the 40 days, from Rosh Chodesh Elo. Hashem said, I'm not going to wait for you all. 11 months I waited for you all. 11 months I waited for you to go through my guards and all the, you know, all the security, um, you know, devices to come to me, to visit me. And we forgot. Throughout the whole year, many of us, you know, we were angry at him, we're, we're questioning him, we're not sure what he's doing in his big, uh, you know, Shemaim warehouse up there in terms of bringing Geula, like we don't get it. So Hashem says on Rosh Chodesh Elo, I'm going to come down. I'm going to leave all my entrees, all the secure, nothing. I'm coming down to meet you in the field. While you're there working in the field, what do we do in the field? Lubavitcher Rebbe says, you're working, you're sweating, you're, you didn't even put deodorant on. You didn't prepare the hors d'oeuvres for the king. I don't care. I want to see you in your schmutz in the heat of the day. I want to see you in your avoda, working to find me. I want to see you there. And then on Yom Kippur, Hashem is down. He's with us. He's like, look, you're letting go of all the pleasures. You're letting go of food. You're letting go of, you know, of everything. And you're going into Kodesh HaKodeshim. On Yom Kippur, everyone is a Kohen Gadol. Everyone is a Kohen Gadol. Everyone chooses to make that choice to say, no, I'm going to take away all the mechitzas. I want my soul. I want to feel my soul. Five tefillahs. Keneged against all five levels of our soul. We know we have five levels. We say the word soul because in English, it's a watered down language. It's only in Lashona Kodesh when you know Hebrew, you can really get to feel and sense the reality. You can't understand reality unless you know Hebrew. Everybody in Ulpan, yes? That, uh, we, 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 we really, we need to, to learn the language to understand it. So in, in Hebrew, we get to really experience the five levels of the soul. Five levels of the soul on Yom Kippur. It's the only day of the year where we have five tefillahs. One against each one of the levels of our soul. By the time we get to Ne'ila, we're at the level of Yechida. Yechida is that pristine chalek eloka mimal that we read all the time. What is this chalek eloka mimal? What does that mean? That's the chalek, that's the part of all of us that we share the yechida, the oneness, that rope, that no matter what I did this past year or what I've done in my past life or lifetimes, in the, the various reincarnations that I've been here as a soul before, we've all been here and done that. We're all recyclable, by the way. We've all been here. We might have been men. We might have been goyim. We might have been whatever. But we've all been here. This is not a new life. We're all recyclable souls. We've all been a guest in Hashem's world before. And so essentially, on Yom Kippur, Sha'at Ni'ila, we're at that level of Yechida. Tefillat Ni'ila, that last tefillah, is connected the, the level of our, of our soul called Yechida, which means that's the place where we are one with Hashem. At the level of Atzilut, the highest level, the highest heaven, of consciousness, the highest plane of consciousness, we're there because we have the least amount of food, we're the least connected. I know you might think you're most connected to, to your body because you're thinking about, oh, soon I'm gonna be able to eat. You're actually not. You're most drained, your blood is most drained from any food source or physical source that has sustained you up until then. With every tefillah, you're more and more spiritual. 
right? From the first one, you still have food. Okay, so we're most connected. But as we go throughout the day, we're less and less connected to our physical source. What sustains us? You're more and more above, which means your neshama, <coughs> everything is coming from above. All the sustenance that we get on Yom Kippur is from above. It's from a spiritual source because we're not getting sustained. How do we live? We're not living off the grapes and the watermelon and the tzomikal and all. That's not what's sustaining us. What's sustaining us is our our surrendering over everything over to Hashem. The tefillahs are sustaining us. The connection to Hashem that he is making himself available for us for 25 hours, that is what's sustaining us. We're being sustained from a completely different place, from a completely different plane. Now, it doesn't matter that three seconds later you're eating your rogalach. The imprint and the impression that you have closed up at Sha'at Ni'ilah, that stays all year long. So even if just for that one split moment, that one split moment of true attachment to your soul, that imprint stays with us all year long. Look for that moment. Even if it's just a fleeting moment where you suddenly, you did, you forgot that you didn't eat. You forgot that, you know, you're, 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 you're literally being held on. You're, who's holding you up? Hashem is holding you up because you have nothing else. That moment, seize it and stay with it. And I'll share with you five levels, five components, components as brought down by Reb Zusha, Reb Zusha Mianipoli. He's the third disciple um, of uh, third generation disciple from the Baal Shem Tov. He brings down that there are five components and five levels of awareness of tshuva that we should try to enter anytime we do tshuva, but particularly on on Yom Kippur. And I'll go through them just so we have a sense. The first level is Kenega the tough, right? Chuva is tough, shin, vav, bet, hey. There's the five levels, Kenega, each one of the letters that spell the word Chuva. The first letter, tough, is um, parallel to the, the verse in Torah, Tamim tie im Hashem elokecha. Chuva, right, is the first level of tshuva, the first component of really going into what we were talking about in terms of tshuva. And by the way, each one of the five letters is against, right, one of the, the levels of the soul. We said there's five tefillahs and five levels of the soul, five letters that spell the word tshuva. That's what we're trying to enter, that mindset, okay? Tamim tiyei mashem. What does it mean, tamim tiyei mashem? What does it mean to be tmimut, to be betmimut? It means... I, Hashem, I'm with you. I'm Shalem. I am whole in that sense that I am always with you. Tmimut means Shlemut, right? When, when, when we read that Yaakov Avinu, Ish Tam Yoshev Ohalim. What does it mean? He sits with Tmimut, he sits with Hashem in innocence, in simplicity. I'm with you, Hashem. When I'm with you, when I'm with you, Hashem, everything's everything's special and mood. Everything's fine because Hashem is shalem. Hashem, you know, doesn't doesn't uh, lack anything. So the idea is, I'm with you, Hashem, in simple emuna, emuna pshuta. I'm with you. Emuna timima means I am with you, Hashem, and I need nothing when I know I'm with you. If I can be in a place of consciousness where I know I am here in Yom Kippur, I am here with you. Then I have everything, Hashem. You're with me? That means I don't have to look for anything else. I am with you. And I know that when I'm with you, I'm Bishlemut. I don't need anything else. And at the, at the end of the day, I'll just bring us back to a time where we all have forgotten. The time before time, the time before awareness was when all of us were in Shemaim with Hashem before we were carved away before we were split from Hashem, before we even knew that we are a soul, we were one with Hashem. We all know that, right? When we were in Shemaim, before we left Kisei Kavod, I know none of us can even imagine what that feels like, but I say this very often in my classes. Can you imagine for just a moment, just think about it, even just hearing me as I'm saying this, just think about what this might feel like for a moment. What that felt like to be one with Hashem 
before we knew this split off called me, self-awareness, me, or read Esther, I'm, I feel like I'm separate, so to speak, from Hashem, because there's an, or read Esther, and there, there's a Hashem, right? So he, just me being in that awareness, I'm not with one with Hashem, because I feel me, and then I feel as though Hashem, and, and the whole life's journey is to try to get to that place of that, I lost myself, where I need to lose myself in the awareness of Shatap Khan, I'm not here. When you're here, I'm not here. Like to lose myself in this awareness of there's, there is really no me. It's very hard to grasp it, but there is. there are moments in time, you notice it when you're davening, where you actually lose the sense of yourself, where you feel completely engrossed in your tefillah. That is that moment of yichida, of the ni'ila, of that I'm with you, Hashem, and I don't really care about anything else. I'm with you, that sweetness, right? So the idea of imagine what it feels like, or can you at least try to imagine what that might have felt like to have been one with Hashem to the point where you lacked nothing, nothing. So imagine all the things that you are lacking now in your life, personally, or that we're lacking as a nation. Peace, parnasa, tshuva, um, anything that you feel right now that you're missing in your life. Shalom, right? Whatever it is that you feel like you're missing. Imagine not having any of those lackings, but actually everything that you possibly need right now, you have. Everything's available for you, okay? Just thinking about that, it's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what that even feels like. Like, I don't even remember ever having everything that I really, really need, let alone what I want, but what I need. Okay. Now I'm going to go even deeper than that. Imagine not even understanding the word lacking. Can you even imagine that? What does that feel like to not even know? Like that's a like it's a Chinese word. If anybody who knows Chinese, so then choose another language, right? It's you don't even you never even heard like somebody will say the word lack and you'll be like, what it, what does that mean? Like what does it mean to lack? Like there is there isn't even such a thing because that is essentially where the soul came from, from this consciousness of not even knowing that there's a lacking, let alone something wrong, unfair? Like, what does that mean? Illness? Like, what do you mean? No money? Like, wh what are you even talking about? What are you even talking about? Everything is perfect. Our soul originated from that place. That's Tmimut. That's what it means, Shlemut. It means that I know inside, in the deep recesses, in my kishka, somewhere in the colon, like the deep, 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 the subatomic, uh, subatomic particles of my being, at the baseline of my energy, I have an impression, a memory that's so hidden from me, but yet it is the engine that keeps me alive. That memory, that is why we are all able to still keep kosher, keep Shabbos, cover our hair, wear 300 layers when it's 100 degrees out. What do, you, why, what do you think keeps us doing all this? It's because we all have that faint taste and memory impressed inside of us that Hashem, you're, you're Shalem and you're wonderful and you're, you're a kol tov and there's no ha and there's no bad. And everything is perfect, exactly the way you intended it to be. And that is what keeps us going. We're not just going through the motions and just by rot, but we really inside deeply. And that's what enables us to also live on Kiddush Hashem and willingly die on Kiddush Hashem. The neshamas that die on Kiddush Hashem are able to do so. Bishlemut because they are tamim, they are an olatimima. They are a true, true, um, sac like a pure sacrifice because they're in touch with their yechida, because they're in touch with this awareness, because they are one with Hashem, because they know the shlemut of Hashem sashkacha. And that's why they say that those that die on Kiddush Hashem feel no pain at all at the moment of their patira. There's no pain because they're so one with Hashem 
there is no physical pain. They don't, they're, they're not able to feel even because they're not attached to their body. They're one in soul and a soul has no pain. The soul of Hashem has no pain. People ask me, like, I have MS, I have multiple sclerosis. That's what began my whole Amuna journey. And, um, and, and people have asked me, like, how do you do this? How do you teach? And, you know, with the physical pain of, of bearing a, a chronic illness such as, as, as MS. And I say to them like this, if you really, really are attached more to your soul than you are to your body, then you can actually live with pain and yet not really feel the pain. You can, it surpasses the senses. I remember when I was diagnosed also with MS, my mother was crying and crying and crying. Oh my gosh, like you out of all people, like why, why, why do you have to be with your, with your MS? And I said to my mother the following, I said, you know, Ma, my body has MS, but my soul doesn't have MS. Well, after 120, my soul goes back up to Shemaim. It's not going up with MS. It's going up. Well, it's going up with MS. I always say my MS. It's going up. Look, at interesting how Shem gave me MS. It's going with MS, but not the multiple sclerosis part of MS, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. So, so the bottom line is Tamim Tiyayim Hashem means that you feel that deep, deep, deep inside of you, there is that place of ultimate shlemut, of wholesomeness, of oneness, of perfection. And, and that's, that's a place where we need to, to really reach. That's part and parcel of the process of, of, of living um, b'tshuva. The second part is the shin. The shin is connected against the verse, shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid. The Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh teaches, and I teach energy training and energy um, therapy um, under the Haskam of Rav Wozner Shlita. And one of the ways that we go into the consciousness of energy therapy is I put all the practitioners um, and also level oneers, if we're doing, we're training um, to do this on our own, is I put us through, and I have various different ones. You can go on my YouTube um, uh, Daily Dose of Amuna channel, and you can you find them even for free. Um, you know, uh, uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Um, I put us through a meditation called uh, the Shiviti meditation, and that is Baal Shem Tov Hakadosh says. What does it mean, Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid? It means Shiviti. What are you supposed to put in front of you? Shiviti means to put in front of you the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He. Out of all the names of Hashem, that's the only name that we really aren't in full contact with. Only in the Bet HaMikdash where we're allowed to pronounce the full Shem HaMifuash, right? The full sh the full name of the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He. You're not allowed to pronounce it. We say Adnut instead of the actual pronunciation of the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He. And yet, the Baal Shem Tov says, I want you to always have pshat in front of you, the yud and the hey and the vav and the hey. I want you to live in the consciousness of the out of the world consciousness that you're not allowed to really be connected to, but I still want you to always remember that it exists. It exists. The yud and the hey and the vav and the hey. We're not allowed to put an image in front of us of how Hashem looks, but the relationship that we have with Hashem is through the Aleph Bet. And particularly when we see in the order, the yud, and then the he, and then the vav, and the he, and then of course, depending on the nikuda, right, the nikudot, the, the, the vowels that are underneath it, that brings in another level of awareness, and the tamim, another level, but just pshat, when you see the yud, and the he, and the vav, and the he, it brings and invokes, and it awakens inside of you the consciousness that, the consciousness of the Bet HaMikdash, the consciousness of Gilui, the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He, the, all the words, the, uh, the, the Shemot of Hashem, right? There's Kel, there's Kel Tzvaot, there's Adnut, there's Elohim, there's various different, right? There's Ka. But out of all of them, Hashem wants us to, Dafka have, right? In Tehillim, Shiviti Hashem, He wants us to see the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He, because that's the Shlemut of the revelation of the Rachamim of Hashem. We need to always have it in front of us, the kel male rachamim. The whole idea of going into Yom Kippur and to do tshuva. You cannot do tshuva unless you truly believe she Hashem, 
Hu HaElokim, Hashem, the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He, is Midat Hadin, is the powers and the Teva that we see in the world. It's all Male Rachamim. Hashem created the world with Midat Hadin, but really, there's all Rachamim inside. There's all compassion. There's love. There's, there is no, it, we read in Megillat Eicha, there is no bad. With all the evil that we see, the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh teaches us that even in the bad, there's a spark, there's a chayut elokut, there's, there's elokut, akol is elokut, there's all Hashem. It's just to take out something good from within the klipa that appears to be so horrible and evil. But what is mechayelto? What is enlivening even the possibility of evil? There's Hashem in there. There's a gilui. There's something that needs to come out from within the klipa, like from within, so to speak, the orange peel. There's the fruit and the klipa and the outer and the external is hiding something beautiful. And our job is to go and to reveal. That's the whole idea of galut. It's to go in and to say, no, I don't agree. I don't believe that this is it. I don't believe that this which I see, this mitziut, these sirens, this Hezbollah, these Hamasi, Machshimam, all of that, no, that is not the mitziut. There's so much more. There's so much more to this reality. There's Hashem is mechayet kulam. Hashem, you are here. And I, I don't believe, I, they're all a facade. It's all a delusion. It's all you. So the Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid means, Hashem, you are revitalizing. You are the life force of everything that happens in this world. Right? That's the second level of tshuva. The third level of tshuva is the Vav. Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. The way I do tshuva is I have to recognize that everyone is kamoni. I love everyone kamoni. I have to love myself. And once I love myself, because I have to, how do I love them? What is, the, what is the measuring bar of how much I need to love everyone else? <laughs> the way I love myself. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I have to love everyone like I love myself. I hate myself. That's a problem. That's a problem. The first, what's more important when I do the chuba process is I have to forgive myself. I have to love myself. I have to forgive myself. I have to take myself off of this, this high level of expectation. Oh, I failed. I didn't do. I wasn't. Rabbi Nachman says, if you really want to do tshuva shlema, don't forget to recall your nekudot tovot. Don't forget to recall all the good things you have done since last year. Last year, you also sat and did tshuva before Rosh Hashanah. Can you recall the things that you did tshuva on last year that you've kept for an entire year? You've done better? Okay, you said you're gonna stop getting angry. I'm sure that throughout the year you were angry 99% of the times, not 100% of the times, <laughs> right? You screamed not for 10 minutes, for nine minutes or 59 seconds, one second less. Give yourself some, some credit where credit is due. You deserve that. Otherwise, if you don't bring up all the good things that you have done, what's going to be your motivation to do tshuva this year? You'll be like, nah, well, what I'm going to again say I'm going to be tshuva. Who am I kidding? If you can recall the things that you did right last year, or at least the yearnings that you had, the desires you did, you really intended, you wanted, build on that. That is what is going to enable you. So you have to have the vehav to the reach kamocha. You have to have the love for yourself, and you have to feel the achdut of neshamot. You have to feel that you are one, which is what I said before, caring for your fellow Jew. You have to have an open heart. You have to recognize that we are all, at the end of the day, we all have the same goal. We all want to go back after 120 and stand in front of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And that bet din shalmala, that's the real bet din. And to feel like we've done something amazing in our lives. And we all have, and we all are. 
עצם העובדה, the fact that we are Shomer Torah and mitzvahs, that we're, we're even sitting here in a class together, that we want to feel the goodness of Hashem, we're already doing something phenomenal. Because I'll tell you, Al Piteva, really, the world, the nations are saying, Ayel Okechem, where is your God? Okay, thank God they're starting to see with all the miracles that are happening. But they still are always probing, where's your God? Yeah, where was he October 7th? Isn't that the question that everyone asked? Where was he? Where is he in the Holocaust? Where is he? And so we need to stand together and we need to profess our emunah in Hashem. We are all one. We're all fighting the same thing. We're all representing the same God. Each one coming from it. One is cleaning the floors. One's hanging up the pictures. But we're all working in the same palace. We're all doing the same job. And we all have to recognize that at the end of the day, we're all really here to bring about Gilui Elohim, to be um, representatives of Hashem. So the Ve'ahavta, the Re'acha Kamocha, is 100% of the tshuva. That means, yes, coming to peace, letting go of the angers, the resentments, the responsibilities that we have placed wrongly on those who have hurt us. We have to let go of the psychological pains, the emotional pains that we are holding, yes, hostage, we are all feeling held hostage by other people who have wronged us. We need to free ourselves from those emotional captives. That is a big, big part of freeing the actual physical captives, is that we have to feel that we are freer than them. But if we feel subjugated and held by those who have done us wrong, then we're really also serving, we're allowing other Elohim to be in charge of us. Because the minute you hold somebody else responsible for the pain that you are feeling, that means there's some other power besides Hashem. It's really at the end of the day, we have to really take and know that every pain that we are going through, it's our cheshbon with Hashem, and it's their cheshbon with Hashem. So this is a very, very important part of our, of, of our tshuva process. So we're going down now to the bet. Bet represents the verse, Bechol Brachecha Da'ehu. The acronym of the, those three, um, the, the first letter of each one of those, um, uh, the, each one of those, um, that verse is Bet Dalid Dalid Badad. Bechol drachecha da'el means to sit and to know and to recognize Hashem, I am with the B'dit, I am alone with you, right? Bechol drachecha da'el means I'm sitting alone with myself and I'm saying, you know what, Hashem? You're in charge of everything. Nothing happens as happenstance. Nothing happened out of nowhere. In everything that I have experienced in my life, even the downfalls, even my sins, even the moments of my weaknesses, in all the pluses and all the successes and all the minuses and all my failures, and there is no such thing, I'm just using it because that's the word we use. You, Hashem, have guided me every step of the way. Everything that I have gone through in my life, it's all you. En od milvado means en. What is en? doesn't say yesh me or en. Oh, no, en means en. You think Hashem doesn't know the words that he's using? En means en od milvado. That means you are with me in everything that I go through in my life. Like I said, all the pluses, all the minuses. I'm on a mission to fulfill your rut zone. You are guiding me. You have also shown me the places that I haven't been able to overcome my temptations, my lusts, my negativities, my yetzaharas, whatever you want to call it, you have been with me all along. And when I went down, you were with me in my downfalls. And when I go up, I'm also lifted, lifted up because you are with me and you're enabling me to come back. The last but not least from the word tshuva, we have the letter hey. Hey stands for Hatsne lekat im Hashem elokecha. Walk humbling, humbly with Hashem. What does that mean? In order to do tshuva, we need to know that there's a level of hiddenness. There's a level of a lack of understanding 
Tsanua, the Hatsne means tsniut, modesty. Us women, we know this very well. What is modesty? What does it mean to be tsanua? What does it mean to walk humbly and to walk modestly with Hashem? It means that I have to recognize modesty come, is, is from the idea of um, latsnia means to be hidden, right? That's what modesty does. It, it, it covers up. I have to know that when I really walk with Hashem, it means that I'm walking with a God that's unknow unknowable to me. I'm walking with a God that I'm walking with him in, uh, with, with humility, with modesty means I don't know everything about this God. I don't know. There's, there's so many levels of this God, of this creator of mine, of my beloved that I so want to come close to, that I so want to be attached to, but there are levels about him that I will never really be able to understand. There's a, it's, it's a relationship that's built on a concealment, on, on a hiddenness that I really can't fully understand who this God is. And I have to be willing to have a relationship with my creator from this level that this hidden part of him, the reason why it's hidden from me is because he's sacred. He's so holy. He's so levad. He's so on his own that if I was to understand everything about him, I would be him. But because I'm not God, there's always going to be a mystery, a mysterious, a hiddenness, a, a separateness. What does it mean to be kadosh, a sacredness? What, is, what does it mean, kadusha? When we say hamadil ben kadosh lechol, what does that mean? What does it mean, am kadosh? What is this whole idea of us being a holy nation? What does that mean? Kadusha represents separateness, represents something that's set aside. Hamabdil ben Kodesh Lachol, Yom Shvi'i, Yom Kippur, Shabbat Shabbaton. That's what Yom Kippur is. It's a day that's separated. It's different. It's not like everything else. Hashem is not like everything else. He is Hakadosh Baruch Hu. He is the Kedusha. He is the Kedusha. He is the separateness. He is the hiddenness. He is the sacred. He is the origin of everything Kadosh. So he's separated. So I can never really understand. I can't always understand everything that he's doing. And so the ultimate level of tshuva is for me to recognize that I'm, I'm not going to be able to understand all of his ways. I, I need to know he's in every one of my ways. I need to know he's part of everything in my life, but I won't always fully be able to encompass in my pea-sized brain everything that he's doing. I can't understand him. His machshavot are not my machshavot. His ritzonot are not my ritzonot. His way of doing things is not my way of doing things. And so there has to be this certain level of understanding that um, I won't always understand everything about him. Um, so at the end of the day, this whole idea of Yom Kippur is really for us to understand that we are separating ourselves from all the things that we know. We are separating ourselves from the externals, the things that our, that our body senses. At the end of the day, the way that we um, understand life is through our body. We understand everything through the mechanism called our body. Our biochemistry produces hormones that elicit, elicit certain emotional responses. On Yom Kippur, we separate from all of that and we allow ourselves, we submerge into this mikvah, mikvah by the word from the word likavot, mikvah from the word mikava. What is a mikvah? When we tovel ourselves in the mikvah, we're toveling ourselves in a pool of hope. That is what Yom Kippur offers us. It's a day of renewal of hope, that we will come out of it with a different mindset, with a different kav. Mikvah is mi Hashem, right? Mem, kav, Hashem. Mi Hashem, kav. In other words, there's this kav, there's this, this uh, pipeline, there's this, there's this line, there's this connection that I feel me Hashem, it's all from Hashem. That's what I need to be submerged in. And that's why we take away all the mechitzas. We take away all the externals and we wanna go into Yom Kippur with as less baggage 
with as less chatzitzot, with the least amount of barriers so that we could be fully submerged in the consciousness that Yom Kippur gives us. It's a gift beyond all gifts. Even though we dread it and we don't wanna go into 25 hours of not eating, but on a soul level, we are so nourished. We are so fulfilled. We are so happy that if we could, that how do you, how do you experience that? Go into Yom Kippur with the least amount of baggage as possible. What does that mean? In the next 48 minus hours that we have left, try to take away as many of those barriers between you and Hashem that you, you could possibly think of. Come up with a list, hopefully starting tomorrow, and start checking off anything that you think is really right now standing between you and Hashem. You and Hashem having a loving relationship. What is in between? Your <laughs> anger towards Him, your, uh, your feelings that he's, un he's been unfair with you or with the nation. Write it down. Um, people that have angered you, people that have you know, uh, mistreated you, all kinds of different qualms that you have with people. They happen to be his, cre his creation, right? Anything that has to do with any of the negative emotions that you have inside of you, start coming up with the list and see as many of them as you possibly can. Try to come to peace with them. Because again, in order to really feel the experience of Yom Kippur, what it means to be submerged in that day, Mikveh Yisrael, it means you have to take away as many of the mechitzas as you possibly can, Be'ezlat Hashem. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna open up to questions. If anybody has questions, anybody wants to, you know, um, any clarification on anything that I've said, I'm very, very happy to, um, to answer. Um, yeah. yeah, I remember they said a few minutes ago, and failure is not a real concept, but we use that word. I mean, we, we sin, so we, we've missed, like, there was, it was right. intent, like Hashem knew it was going to happen, but the still is our fault. So, what words should we. Right. Okay, so that's that in itself is a whole class. I'll, I'll share with you, Rabbi Nachman says, there are two levels of tshuva. The first level of tshuva, and, Ad and we know this from Adam Alishon. <laughs> The first level of tshuva is aviti pashati chatati. Oh my gosh, I just totally messed up Hashem. Like I really, really did. I shouldn't have done it. And I'm so sorry because I am, I'm about Khira and I have choice. And when I stood in front of that, the, the words, the actions, the thoughts, whatever it is that I did, I could have, cho I could have chosen better. I could have chosen differently. And, and for that, we take responsibility. That's level one, a hundred percent. Rabbi Nachman says there's a second level. The second level is, what am I nuts? Am I nuts? Do I really think that I could have done something against Ratzon Hashem? Do I really think that I did something that was against what Hashem really wanted? And Adam Rishon had this qualm out with Hashem. And he said, Hashem, you put me in front of this Temptation, you knew all along that I would not be able to say no to it. You knew all along that I was going to sin. You stopped me, Hashem. How dare you? And Rabbi Nachman says that you need to also always keep that in mind, and that's what's called tshuva on tshuva. Rabbi Nachman talks a lot about this, that you every day have to do tshuva on the tshuva that you did. What does that mean? How could I have even thought that I even did something against you? It's very deep what I'm saying. It's very hard to say it on one foot and in three seconds. I have a whole, by the way, I teach a whole program called Rise and Shine on my website, oramona.org, where I go through this whole process. It's not just a simple thing what I'm saying. But I just, if you're already asking, I want you to know that there is that mindset. It's not pashut bechlal. It's not simple to just say, ah, viti pashati chatati, I did it. Yes, I did, and yes, everyone needs to do it. I'm, I'm the first one. We all have to say, I am responsible, yes. But on the other hand, Hashem knows what He's doing, and that's why He created tshuva, by the way. He created tshuva pre-creation because he knew that we were gonna fall. He knew that we weren't gonna be able to withstand half the things that we're tempted to do. 
Again, that doesn't give us a free free from jail card, a monopoly. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. We're 100 percent responsible, but with that, we have to know that Hashem put plan A, B, C, and D. We really didn't mess up his world. At the end of the day, Hashem still is overseeing everything. And can I dare to say something that I, I hope everyone's gonna take it in the right light? That inside the downfall. The spark that enlivens that downfall, that klipa, is the power of tshuva. That oftentimes Hashem puts us in situations where we know part of the part of the things that that go through that that tzaddikim have to experience downfall is so that they can go down and bring up all the sparks of the klipas of those that need to do tshuva and bring them up and give them the strength to come back. It's a very deep Kabbalistic concept. Again, I'm not going into it. I just want you to understand there's more to it than just the piti pashati chatati. There's a lot more to it. Okay? That's all I, I just want to... The idea is I want to tantalize you all to understand that what you see is not what you get. It's not so pashut. It's not so simple to just and to say, I get life. No. We, Rabbi Nachman says, you know when you know you know life? When you say, I know nothing. Hmm. When you say, I know nothing, that's when you could say to yourself, maybe I know something. I know that I don't know anything. <laughs> it's not so pursued. And by the way, if anybody's intrigued to hear more about this, I'm actually joining a trip to Uman, October 30th to November 5th, if anybody's interested. You can uh, be in touch with me and uh, join the trip. Yes. I have a question, uh, Thank you for everything. Um, if you can please share with us anything additional to this very, very special Shabbat, Yom Kippur Shabbat. It's not a coincidence, of course, and it's like another level of uh, something very special. So if you can help us to connect, and to, is there any special connection with Geula, any Segula? Right, right. So, first of all, there definitely is, there's a segula brought down, by, I know, because a lot of us are worried about the idea that um, I'm not going to eat, I'm going to be thirsty, and it's, what was the temperature going to be on Shabbos? I have to know. Will my body be able to sustain? And let's take another gulp of grape juice. There is, you know, the idea of the grapes and grape juice that keep the, you know, the electrolytes in the body. There is a segula. I don't know how I'm going to pass it on to you all, but there is an actual water meditation that you drink the last cup of water that you drink. There's a special meditation brought down by the Arizal that if you follow this meditation, it's so baduk, it's so baduk, it's so like beyond. Anybody who does this meditation, like I really was not thirsty all of shop. You, it's not them saying you're not gonna be hungry, but you, you will definitely be able to sustain your, the water molecules in your body. So I don't know how I'm gonna, maybe I, you know what? I. Um, I'm just trying to think. If anybody is on social media, I'll post it on my Facebook page. Okay, I'll post on my Facebook page, and uh, or you can you can yeah, and then you could share it or whatever. Or I'll just I'll send it in an email. I guess if uh, you know what you all wrote, right? You wrote down your email, so then I'll share it with you all. And for those who are watching on Torah anytime, you'll figure out how to contact me as well. I'm very I'm pretty accessible through ormuna.org. So first of all, that's that. Um, I will say to you that. One of the things that I need to recognize, we all need to recognize on Yom Kippur, is that we're clearing ourselves out from Averot. What is an Avera? What is the idea? This is how I want you to have this concept. There's so much more going on than just me saying Aviti Pashati Chatati. An Avera, if you break down the letters, I, I love to play Scrabble with the Hebrew language. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that the Baal Shem Tov did very much so. If you take the letters from Avera, you can spell the word B, Ra, Hashem. You can actually create another, right? That, that's what the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh did. He would take a certain mahala, a certain illness that a person has, and he would change the <coughs> letters, and then it would come out to be something completely different, and that was the segula. That was the segula. Like I took the word Yom Kippur, 
right? Kaf, pei, and reish, and I switch, and we spell another word, right? So you can un you can have a better level of understanding creation if you take the letters and play Scrabble all day long. Bananagrams, it's a whole new idea. They should do it in Hebrew, right? So the idea is 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 to, you can understand the levels, the dimensions, the consciousness of creation by taking the letters in the Hebrew language and switching the order around, right? And you could do that, by the way, with your name too. Want to play Scrabble? Take the letters of your name and see what other words you can come up with. You'll understand the dimensions of who you really are based on that. It's, it's phenomenal when you can understand the depths of who you really are. I'll even share something even more. I'm going off, the, this is, I tend to do this, I go off the <coughs> track, okay? If you take, let's say Sarah, right? If you take the, the letter Shin, how do you spell Shin? It's, it's very interesting. In the Hebrew language, each letter actually ha has a meaning. Shin is shen. It's sh it's a sheni, right? So you could actually take the letter, every letter of the Hebrew language of, of the alphabet, take the letter, and you can actually make a word out of it. But not only that, you can actually switch the letters around and again come into different meanings. So if you take Sara, shin is Shin Yud Nun, right? I'm just taking one letter from Sara, okay? Now I take the Shin and I spell Shin again, Shin Yud Nun. I take uh, the Yud, Yud Vav Dalit, and I take the Nun and it's Nun Nun, right? And now I go and I keep breaking it down more and more and more and more from one letter, one letter that spells your name if you take all those letters, it, it already tells part of the story of your life. Now, obviously, we're not Makubalim. We wouldn't know how to do that. Now, if you took the Reish and you did that, you took the He and you did that, do you know how many words you're making out from just the letters of Shin, Reish, and He? All of your history, all of your ancestral history, all the story of your, your Neshama from the day of creation is all embedded in those letters that spell that are the the branches of spelling the letters of your name why did i say that i forgot why oh because i was saying about avera i was say, uh, talking about the idea of how you could take all these words that we know in the hebrew language and they their worlds and worlds and worlds of understanding and it's so way beyond the way we look at life so avera what does it mean in Avera? It means that I feel be ra that there's something wrong with me. And Avera makes me, it, I did, I did something, so to speak, against the Ratzon of Hashem. But what I'm left with is feeling that I am bad and that Hashem is not with me. Hashem is like away from me. And that really is an Avera. An Avera is Avar yud -hei. Hashem is on the other side. I'm on the other side and Hashem is on the other side. What is an Avera? I'm separated from Hashem. Why? Because of my badness. Because I did something wrong. So the whole idea is if we're doing tshuva, we want to extra, we want, tshuva means to take tashuv hey, I'm going back to Hashem. I want to go back to Hashem. I want to go back to, hey is five. Five are the five levels of my soul. I want to go back through the five tefillahs of Yom Kippur. I want to go back to Hashem. Hashem is He is five. I want to feel the wholesomeness of myself on all five levels of my consciousness, of my soul. From, from my bloodstream, which is the nefesh, to my ruach, to the words that come out of my mouth and my feelings, to my neshama, to the, my thoughts. I want my thoughts to be more pure. To my chaya, to the, all my ritzonot and all the things that I chase after in my life, to my yechida, to feeling the oneness that I never really have ever left Hashem. Hashem, you're always with me, right? So, so that is what we're trying to cleanse out. That is what Yom Kippur is offer, offering us. It's this ability to feel one with Hashem, that there's nothing, nothing. You know, at the end of the day, none of us really sinned. What does that mean? That part of me, that chalak eloka mimal, is still pure. Do you know what sinned? My <coughs> garments. My garments. I sinned with my garments. Meaning, garments is, I put in the washing machine, or I buy a new 
you know, beg it. I buy a new something. That is what we're trying to cleanse. The me, the real you, the real me is pure and innocent like the virgin of Elul. We never really sinned. We, the, the, that part of us, that chadaka loka mimal, that's pure. What we want to clean off is the externals. And that's why we let go of the externals in, in Yom Kippur. Because we want to come back to that chalak eloka we, we want to get to know that soul. We get to see the soul on Yom Kippur. Be'ezrat Hashem. And so what is this, this tuma, this, this tuma that we're trying to get rid of, which is the avera? Tuma from the word atimut. Atimut means sealed off. What we're trying to clear off, what does it mean to come out of the, uh, the Tuma, to become Tahora by dipping into the mikvah? It means I want to not be sealed off from you, Hashem. I want to feel close to you. The Atimut, the, the, the Tuma, seals me off from feeling your love. When we, di- when we dip into the mikvah, we go from a place of Tuma to Tahor, right? What are we told? Tahora, right? A tahora. Why? I'm taking away anything that has closed me off, that has sealed me off from feeling close with you. That's what the mikvah, that's what Yom Kippur invites us to do. Is that that consciousness that I was separated from you, which from the beginning, the av- avera is avarka, I was separated from you. I want to I want to now clear that off. And I want to go into the mikvah. The mikvah is to come back to the kav, come back to the pipeline, come back to that line that connects me to you, heaven and earth. I'm, I never was disconnected. I want to go back to that consciousness. That's what I'm looking to do. That's the long answer. I hope that uh, clarifies. Yes. Yes. Thank you. If you've done wrong, but the person's lived us, they've gone. So can you still ask for forgiveness? Yes, absolutely. We light a, a candle or we can go to the kever. Um, we can light a candle, the Lui Nishmat, and absolutely. In the world of Emet, there's there's slicha. You know, the neshama wants nothing more than to be at peace. It doesn't want to feel, and it feels the pain, the neshama feels. So the neshama doesn't want to feel like there's anything holding back and from this world. Otherwise, it's chayab. The neshama still owes something to a neshama here that, that holds responsibility from it. So the neshama wants this, this sense of peace, of, of shlemut. Um, and you can light a candle and, and do your tshuva, you know, c- connecting to the neshama through the candle or going to the kever. Yes. You say the five tefillot on Yom Kippur. Now, Rosh Hashem, I don't have the opportunity to go dive in necessarily. All the so, how can I feel that connection with the opportunity to dive in? Maybe two or three of them. Okay, so it it would. I'm not, I'm not a posek and I'm not a rub. So if I'm saying something wrong, I you know I I really need this to be checked against the rub. I I, I know that it's important to daven as much as you possibly can. But yes, we all have restrictions and we all have responsibilities. And I was a young mother myself. Today I'm a safta already. So it's so nice to be a safta that you don't have to worry about the screaming kids uh, in the in the shul anymore. Um, but but you should make a tefillah out of every single one of those five tefillahs. What does that mean? Something that you should make it that, okay, this is my alvit, this is my shacharit, this is my musaf, this is my mincha, this is my na'ila. You mean an action? A part, no, a part, take a part of each one of that those five tefillahs. If you choose to do vidui, each one of those times, or you choose to say part of the tefillah for each one of those times, make it a sha'a, make it a time that that you have appointed five of those tefillahs, and, and it doesn't have to be in coordination with exactly what they're doing it in shul. Your shacharit is your shacharit, it's before chatzat ayom, right? Or whatever. Your arvit is before sunrise, you know, uh, Arab yom, right? Make say this is my this is my alvit this is my this is my shacharit this and 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 connect 
at that point and say, okay, these I want I want to come closer to these five levels of tefillah, five levels in, in parallel to the five levels of my soul. I'm gonna make it. That's you make your own tefillah. You understand? You make your own at kovat team. You make those times. Okay, check it against the rub, but that's that's what I would suggest doing. Again, if anyway you're anusa, what we call you're you're limited because of course it makes sense. Which we're not chayav, we're not chayav as young mothers, we're not chayav or all the five tefillas. But make something that you could say that these are your five moments of tefillah. Okay, Okay, so if anybody uh, you you all signed in, uh, you know I'm going to be uh, signing you up to the daily dose of Amuna, which means basically you're going to be getting a, an, an Amuna email into your inbox, God willing. Um, and I have my three books here. Um, my turnaround, the latest one is Turn Around Your Life. Uh, it's a, a weekly Parsha book according to the original teachings of the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. Um, Turn Around Your Emotions is really a chapter book to teach you um, what it means to live a life of Amuna and how it affects literally in your body how you emotionally experience your life and, you know, self all about self-healing through Amuna, but with practical, practical ideas. And then my first book is Turn Around 180 Degrees in 180 Days is a daily Amuna lesson with a takeaway lesson. A lot of women learn it Chavruta style. Um, it's a six-month program to really get you to feel uh, more of Hashem's life, uh, light and presence in your life. And uh, you're welcome to also visit oramona.org, all the classes there, the energy uh, therapy training and the various different uh, programs that I have there, my retreats and programs that I teach. Um, I hope you'll stay in touch. I'm wishing everybody a gumar chatima tova. And Bezrat Hashem, may this year be the year. May this year be the year of Yeshuot Gedolot Barachamim Gedolim. Amen. Thank you again. Thank you again. And uh, looking forward to staying in touch. Thank you.